Welcome back. In this tutorial, we're going to cover AWS load balancing and AWS EC2 auto scaling groups. Let's begin with an example. Suppose that you have a single EC2 instance running your application. Then all your inbound traffic is directed to that single EC2 instance. The biggest problem with this model is that if your web server fails for any reason, whether it's hardware or software, then your application will be down and unavailable to your users. Other examples can be like, let's say you performed a system update, deployed code, or you performed any task that makes your server inaccessible. Then basically you will end up shutting down your entire website until your server is up and running again. Another reason why a single server model is bad, let's say for example if you experienced a spike in your traffic and your server is no longer able to handle the workload, then your application will also be inaccessible. To address those problems, this is where we use the AWS Elastic Load Balancing and AWS Auto Scaling Groups so that all your inbound traffic is directed to your load balancer, then from there to multiple EC2 instances. AWS Auto Scaling Groups will allow us to control the number of EC2 instances and auto scale as traffic increases per our configuration. To give you a quick summary, load balancers are used to route traffic between two or more servers. EC2 auto scaling groups are used to ensure that you have the correct number of EC2 instances running your specified limits. Elastic load balancing is commonly referred to as an ELB is a service from Amazon Web Services that lets you automatically route inbound traffic across multiple targets per your configuration. These targets could be multiple EC2 instances, AWS Lambda functions, a range of IP addresses, or even containers. The targets defined within the ELB could be inside different availability zones or within a single availability zone. The traffic is distributed based on the target's health so that all the incoming traffic is directed to a healthy instance. If one of your EC2 instances fail or gets marked as unhealthy, then your elastic load balancer will automatically route all incoming traffic to the remaining running healthy EC2 instances. If the EC2 instance is restored, means that it's healthy again, then the elastic load balancer will restore incoming traffic to that instance. There are four different types of AWS elastic load balancers. The first one is the application load balancer. The application load balancer allows you to route traffic to different ports on the same EC2 instance. For example, you could use the application load balancer to redirect traffic from HTTP to HTTPS. Then you also have the network load balancer, which is used for extreme performance in low latency applications. This allows you to route traffic to targets within your VPC. It is used to load balance network and transport protocols for layer 4 TCP and UDP. Then you have a gateway load balancer, and this allows you to easily deploy and scale and manage virtual appliances such as firewalls, intrusion detection systems, and any other system. The last one is the classic load balancer, and this is used if your application is built within your EC2 classic network. It's also worth mentioning that the classic load balancer is depreciated and you should not be using it unless your application is built within the EC2 classic network. The main function for load balancers is to accept inbound traffic and route it to registered targets that you specified. Registered targets can be one or more EC2 instances. 
your load balancer is configured to accept incoming traffic by specifying one or more listeners with a protocol and a port number. For example, you can listen to HTTP or HTTPS requests on port 80 or 443. Then depending on how you configure your load balancer, the traffic will be directed based on your configuration. It's also worth mentioning that the application load balancer, the network load balancer, and the gateway load balancer, they all allow you to register targets in target groups and route traffic to target groups. For the previous generation, the classic load balancer, which is depreciated, you had to register instances with your load balancer. When you first create a load balancer, you will have to select one of two schemes available for your load balancer. The schemes available are internet facing and internal load balancer. The internet facing load balancer has both a public IP address and a private IP address. The internal facing load balancer has only a private IP address. If you're using a load balancer to route traffic for your website application, where your traffic are your users, then you will need to use the internet facing load balancer. The internal load balancer routes traffic to your EC2 instances in private subnets. The clients must have explicit access to private subnets. This is not for your global users. EC2 Autoscaling is a service from Amazon Web Services. EC2 Autoscaling helps you manage your application availability by allowing you to automatically add or remove EC2 instances according to conditions that you define. You can use it to scale up or scale down depending on how you configure it. This helps you ensure that you have the correct number of instances available to handle your application load. Autoscaling groups are basically a collection of EC2 instances that are created per your configuration. You can use multiple EC2 instances to host your website and automatically increase or decrease scale and descale your instance to handle the load. You can specify minimum number and a maximum number of instances in each autoscaling group. And once you do that, EC2 autoscaling will ensure that your group never goes above or below your specified values. You can also set your desired capacity and EC2 autoscaling will ensure that you have the number that you specified of instances always running. If you also specify scaling policies, then EC2 autoscaling can launch or terminate instances on demand as your application load increases or decreases per your configuration. Thank you for watching. If you found this tutorial useful, then I would appreciate it if you hit that like button. Otherwise, make sure you subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with our latest training videos. If you have any questions, feel free to post it down on a comment below and we'll see you on the next video.